clearly a goal was to find a commonality across the country, at least in English language arts and mathematics, for these academic standards. And that makes sense because in the past we've had different different standards, number one, but you've also had different assessments of those standards. So I think now they've introduced the, the, the new common framework for what, in terms of curriculum and then there'll be a common set of assessments. Also it's internationally benchmarked, so they're trying to determine what are the sort of global standards that we should be uh, aiming for. And so we can also assess at the state level or even the district level, school level, how students are performing relative not only other states but other countries. It's more of a national effort and I think at the same time it's also voluntary in the part of states. No Child Left Behind wasn't so voluntary. Uh, Race to the Top was more competitive. Uh, Common Core state standards are sort of developed. They're here for states to choose them and adapt as they see fit or uh, adopt portions of them. So it's a little bit more flexibility than I think the other reforms. Uh, ironically, it gets the, um, the perception of the Common Core. Sometimes it's a national curriculum and it's forced down states um, to, to adopt. And, and those, are, those are more myths than reality.